نمامی دبرس نمامی دبرس نمامی دبرس نمان دبرس نمان دبرس نمان دبرس نمان دبرس نمان دبرس نمان دبرس Good morning everyone. Thank you for joining us. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about history. I've been putting together a family tree for several years. As you may well know, a family tree is a diagram or drawing that looks like a tree with a lot of branches. You may find yourself in one of those branches along with your siblings if you have if you have any. As you go farther along that branch, you'll see your parents, their parents and so on. Other branches of the tree may show you uncles and aunts and cousins. Part of the fun of putting together a family tree is that sometimes you need to play detective and try to fill in the gaps. You may be missing the names of your great grandmother's parents, for example, or other pieces of information. A family tree is a very visual way of understanding the interdependence that exists between us and those that have come before us. As I put together my family tree, I learned that my paternal grandfather was born in northern Mexico in 1915. As a young man, he met and married my grandmother. They had four boys, including my dad, who was born in 1939. My grandfather moved his family to Tijuana during the 1940s and never left. My dad met my mom when they were teenagers, dated for a couple of years, and then got married. I was born in 1970, the last of three children. In 1995, I started my own tree branch when my first son, Alejandro, was born. There's a picture of a younger me, only 25 at the time, holding my firstborn shortly after getting home from the hospital. Whenever I see that picture or think about it, I remember what Kenji Sensei once said, that rebirth is something that we experience throughout our life, that we are constantly being reborn. When he said that, I remember holding my son for the very first time, and I truly understood what Kenji Sensei meant. I was reborn as a dad on August 20th, 1995. I remember vividly the births of my other two sons, Andres and Arturo as well. I like to think that on those two other occasions, I was reborn as a father with a little more experience just a little wiser. Kids nowadays would probably understand that in the sense of leveling up. My branch continued expanding when my son's daughter Ella was born in November 2017. When I see my, grandma, my granddaughter, it brings back memories of when I was at that age. Just four or five years old. At that age, a father figure is all powerful, all knowing. As we grow up, our view of our father starts changing and we start seeing him as a simple human being. When I talk to my son, Ella's father, we chat about his work, plans, things going on in his life, etc. He lives in North Carolina, so those talks are mainly on the phone and sporadic. I sometimes wonder at what point he stopped seeing me as all powerful and all-knowing and found out I'm just a simple human being with faults and imperfections. Being a father is not easy and we don't always have all the answers. At this stage of my life, I see myself in my four-year-old granddaughter. I see myself in the respective life stages of each of my three sons. And I see where I'm headed when I look at my 82-year-old father. Like Kenji Sensei said, we're constantly being reborn. When you look at a family tree, you are reminded of the interdependence that exists between everyone. But it also reminds you of impermanence. Many of the individuals that appear in our family trees are no longer with us. Both my, mater my paternal and maternal grandfathers passed away in the 1980s. I never met my great grandparents. Our fathers and all the fathers that appear in our family trees are part of those causes and conditions 
that have brought us to where we are and shaped us into who we are. Let's, ex let's express our gratitude for that through the name Lutsu. Please join me in Gashu. Namo Amidavits, Namo Amidavits, Namo Amidavits, Namandavs, 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 Namandavs.